Hi, good morning, guys, and welcome to another instalment of Rivals, the versus matchup series where we pit two or more very well matched vehicles head to head to find out purely for the fun of it which of them, from a raw spec perspective, comes out on top to win. Now, this particular pick is a requested rivalry between two top Japanese exotics, the Nissan GTR and the Lexus LFA. In particular, we are pitting the LFA Nuremberg Ring Edition up against the GTR Nismo. Basically, the top of the performance tree as far as each of these two models go. And for the sake of this particular rivalry, we're changing it up a bit and leaving both cars stock with just tyres and an oil change as their changes. So, let's compare them. First up we have the Lexus LFA. Now this is the far, far more expensive vehicle of the two. In fact, even the non-Nuremberg Ring Edition LFA is far more expensive than most of the GTRs on the game. This particular car costs 445,000 credits to the 154,000 of the Nismo. So as far as sheer value for money and at least affordability, the Nissan does have a pretty early lead. But the question is, how do they perform before we get to the specs on their own terms, when they're alone, on a track, just with you and the car? Well, the Lexus is known for being a very enjoyable driving machine. Lexus put a huge amount of development into the car, so much so that every single vehicle sold actually loses them money, in a similar way to the Bugatti Veyron, due to just how much development and cost was put into the model. And you can feel that. It's a fantastic performance car. Now, I must admit, I don't love the LFA in any of its forms as much as many people do. It is, however, one of the best V10-engined vehicles ever made, certainly road cars, and it's a unique take on the type of vehicle. It manages to blend similarities of other cars, but at the same time, it's very much its own thing. It has a much more exotic feel than the GTR. Everything looks and feels and sounds much more tailor-made to being an ultra-high-class exotic, whereas the GTR feels basically what the GTR has always felt, an uprated version of the existing model. Now, it's not called the Skyline anymore, but the GTR is still an excellent car, and we'll get to that in just a second. For now, the LFA is an excellent car, and let's compare it now, obviously, to the Nissan. Now, in comparison, the Nissan GTR Nismo has a similar, in some ways, but at the same time different approach to performance. The Lexus is a much more traditional feeling vehicle, despite being very technically advanced, and although it shares that same technical advancement level with the GTR, the GTR feels more clinical. Now, the Nismo has more attitude to it than some other GTRs. It's more aggressive, it's more track-focused than many of the others, which are more street-based vehicles, and that shines through. The GTR, in all of its forms, is a very strong track car. This particular model, though, really takes that even further than our other GTR models, even over the Spec V, for instance. Now, the price on this one is more than most other GTRs, certainly more than most other GTR road cars, but at the same time, the value for money is very good. It's of course one of the quickest cars in the game. Of the street cars, it's arguably the quickest with the right tuning, even quicker than the Huayra and the Veyron when tuned correctly. But for the sake of this comparison, neither of the cars are tuned. So overall, around the track, the Nismo is certainly more of a precision machine, and it was the quicker of the two, but despite all of its precision, the GTR was only roughly 0.1 of a second quicker than the Lexus. So overall, they're both brilliant, but now let's see which one actually wins. Now to be completely honest, I expected this match, as appropriate as it is, to be very one-sided. I thought that the Nismo would run away with this match fairly easily, because even with neither car being tuned beyond just an oil change, the GTR just is a more impressive vehicle from a performance point of view, at least in terms of raw spec. That's what I expected anyway. But 
Let's see how it actually turns out. First of all, we have the price. We already touched on the price earlier on, and the Nissan definitely wins there, with 154 grand to the Lexus's 445. So it's a clear point for the Nissan there. For the engine capacity though, we're gonna give it to the Lexus being the larger of the two at 4.8 liters to the Nissan's 3.8. Now, as always, the larger engine isn't necessarily best in real life, but for the sake of the top Trump style comparison, bigger is better. Now, as far as the relatively stock PP levels go on these vehicles, the Nissan again does win with 582 to the Lexus's 554. Also for power, the Nissan wins with 621 to the Lexus 590 and also for torque. Probably not surprisingly given the turbo aspiration, whereas the Lexus is of course a naturally aspirated V10, higher revving engine, just not really designed for torque. As far as weight though, it really does swing in the Lexus favour. 1480 kilos to the Nissan's 1720, significantly lighter for the Lexus. And as far as horsepower per ton, the Lexus also wins there as well. Now, we already said that the overall laps were very close. The Lexus did a 208696, the Nissan a 208573. So, extremely close between the two. And as always, those lap times will not be awarded points because it's based on the car, the tuning, the driver, and the track. So, which one wins overall? Well, if you've been following along and mentally carrying out the point system, you'll probably know that the Nissan does win. But, not by as much as I would have guessed. It does win with four points, but the Lexus gets three under its belt in comparison. Not a bad result at all. Now, of course, if we tuned both of these cars, the Nissan would very easily retain that victory. But in their relatively stock form, apart from an oil change, they actually pair up to each other very well. So that's it overall for this particular matchup. And as always, feel free to slap down below rivalries that you would like to see of two or more vehicles. And as always, I have put the exact lap times as well as more in-depth reviews for these cars down in the description below. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.